Hi, welcome back. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're, I'm going to go over some of the very important principles and concepts behind one of the most important biological coenzymes that we have that's used to generate energy. And that's NAD, or sometimes you'll see this plus sign there. NAD, which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Okay, so first of all, let's go over why it bears this name. Well, the adenine in the name, the adenine comes from the fact that part of the molecule, which actually is derived from ATP, has adenine, this, this nitrogenous heterocycle right here. That's the, the purine base. Um, and it's a dinucleotide. Let's look at why that is. What's a nucleotide? Well, a nucleotide in general has that nitrogenous base bound to a ribose, and then it has to have at least one phosphate right there. Okay, that's a nucleotide. So, for instance, this right here could be, could be A, G, T, C, or U, right? That's a nucleotide with the ribose and the phosphate. Well, notice, if we, sort, we can sort of draw this dotted line, I'll do this in gray, kind of right through this oxygen right there, okay? And notice it sort of is a dinucleotide. On one end, we have this nitrogenous base, adenine with the ribose and a phosphate right here. On the top, we have a very unusual nucleotide. We have a nitrogenous heterocycle up here, but it's not one that we've seen before. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then it's, of course, bound to a ribose and a phosphate right there. So basically, it's two nucleotides joined together, and it's joined together through a very special linkage called a pyrophosphate dinucleotide linkage. What does that mean? Well, a pyrophosphate is anytime you have one phosphate, that is covalently bound to a second phosphate. So this right here, this is a pyrophosphate linkage right there. Sometimes it's called a diphosphate linkage. You'll certainly see that too, but that's how these two nucleotides are joined. Therefore, it's a dinucleotide. The first word, or the first letter also, N for nicotinamide, comes from this nitrogenous heterocycle up here. So basically what this is, it's a pyridine ring with an amide attached to it. Okay, just a, just a simple amide. And that's nicotinamide. So nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. That's where the name NAD comes from. Now, what is the important function of NAD? Well, to come over here, I'm going to put the generic reaction that pretty much, if I can find my mouse, every single one of these reactions follows in, in biochemistry. They're oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. And what NAD does is it's able to accept two electrons and they come in the form of a hydride anion. Hydride, remember, hydrogen normally just has one electron, but if it picks up a second one, it develops a negative charge. And so this is hydride anion. That's where the two electrons come from. The two electrons are right there in that lone pair. Okay, and so NAD is able to take those two electrons away from molecules, and that oxidizes those molecules, but also ends up reducing NAD into this form, NADH. Notice what happens here. Essentially, this double bond, when this happens, rearranges to right there, right? You see it right there. And then this double bond goes on to the nitrogen. You see that there is a lone pair. So some of those double bonds can actually rearrange within the molecule whenever oxidation and reduction occurs. In this video, we're only going to go over the oxidation of molecules using NAD to form NADH. We'll do the reduction or reverse reaction in another video. Okay, so those are some of the properties of NAD. To get a handle on this, let's actually look at some um, generic reactions right here. So one of the types of molecules that NAD can oxidize are alcohols, okay? They can oxidize alcohols. And depending on the substitution on the alcohol, they can either oxidize them into aldehydes or ketones. So let's look and see what happens to get a general feel for mechanisms here. Very important. You're going to have some base system in the active site of the enzyme. It's ordinarily not just one simple base. There's usually a few involved. But ultimately, the terminal one is going to abstract this proton from the alcohol, 
This bond right here is going to come in here and form a carbonyl, and that expels a leaving group, which always is the hydride with the two electrons. The hydride then comes up here and attacks the carbon directly across this ring from the nitrogen, and that causes this double bond to rearrange right there, as we said, and this double bond ends up on the nitrogen as a lone pair. So what are, the, what are ultimately the two products that you see there? Well, it's going to look something like this. So there's one double bond, there's the second one, the lone pairs on that nitrogen. I have this sort of ureido or amide group right there. And then this hydrogen, I'm gonna I'm kind of draw it in red there so you can see it, that hydrogen is gonna be right up top of the ring right there. This form of NAD is the reduced form NADH, whereas this one is NAD, okay? And then what is the main product we're concerned with? Well, in this case, I have an R group there and another R group there. So I'm going to get a ketone, right? If one of those R groups, say, had been a hydrogen, say that one was a hydrogen, then you wouldn't end up with a ketone. You'd end up with what? An aldehyde, okay? So oxid oxidation of alcohols with one NAD can give you aldehydes or ketones, okay? Now there's another type of molecule that can be also be oxidized by NAD, and those are amines. And you can sort of view this alcohol the same way the amine is, is viewed, okay? So again, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a base in the active site, a base relay system, and the terminal one will ultimately deprotonate the alcohol, or excuse me, not the alcohol, the alcohol analog, which is the amine. Then what's going to happen is the same thing, like this bond broke there and formed a carbonyl. This bond's going to break, but it's going to form a different functional group called an imine. And the imine is spelled with an I, not an A. Sometimes imines are also referred to as shift bases. And um, I have a whole couple of videos on shift bases you can watch if, um, if you need to see something on that. So when the shift base forms, the hydride, also this guy right there, I'll do this in orange, the hydride is expelled and it goes right on top of the NAD ring, forces double bond rearrangement, and you're ultimately going to get the same NAD, the H that you got there, right? So I'm going to have that pyridine ring, double bonds rearrange, right? But now this orange hydride is right atop the ring like that, and that is our NADH, our reduced coenzyme, okay? Now, what do I get here? Well, I have that group right there, but then I also have that. And this functional group right here, this is what the imine is, or the shift base. So an imine, an imine is just a carbon-nitrogen double bond, okay? Um, if you had a carbon-nitrogen triple bond, that's a nitrile. We don't usually see those. In fact, they're toxic. But we do see shift bases or imines, and they come ultimately from oxidation of amines into imines, sometimes using NAD. Okay? So those are just general reactions. Let's actually look at a real one that you could see in biochemistry. In fact, this one's more of a biochem 2 topic or something you'll see in medical school. Um, if you're studying bacteria, you may see this. Okay? This is one reaction by which bacteria are able to make histidine an amino acid. Histidine is an essential amino acid, and therefore it's not made by mammals or humans. And so that means we have to get it through the diet. The ultimate source of it are bacteria. And it's about a nine-step pathway. This is the terminal enzyme, histidinol dehydrogenase. Here's what's going to happen. Histidinol, thus the name all, the suffix, um, tells you that it's an alcohol. You see the alcohol up here. Um, First, what's going to happen is that you're going to get oxidation into an aldehyde. There's another step after that that's going to oxidize that into the typical carboxyl group, characteristic of amino acids. But in any case, what's going to happen is we're going to have this base relay system in the active site. The base will deprotonate that alcohol, and it's going to do the kind of the same thing it did over here in these examples, right? Keep in mind, keep in mind, I'm going to do this in, I'll do this in purple, that there's a hydride right there, okay? There's a hydride there, so when the base is deprotonates the alcohol, this is gonna form the carbonyl right there, then the hydride will be expelled, atta attacking right on top of the NAD nicotinamide ring, 
forcing pi electron rearrangement. And you see here the reduced form of NADH, which goes off and can generate energy for that particular cell in the mitochondria. And then you're left here, ultimately, with the aldehyde. And this, is, this one over here, this molecule, is the histidinol. So what is this one called? This is called histidine, what? Al, because it's an aldehyde. Okay, and that's sort of the basics of NAD-based oxidation. Notice we're going from an alcohol to an aldehyde. That is, in fact, an oxidation. Okay, if we were doing the reverse reaction from an aldehyde to the alcohol or a ketone to an alcohol, that would be a reduction. But in any case, because we're using NAD to do this, every time NAD does a reaction like this, its net reaction is going to be a two-electron transfer, and the two electrons are going to come from the hydride anion. Okay, so hopefully this video made a little bit of sense. Um, depending on what in what context you're watching this, it could be useful for organic if you're doing biological applications in there, or it can be useful in biochemistry when you're looking at mechanisms there. So I'll put this in multiple playlists, um, in the alcohol playlist, in organic, and then this will certainly be in biochemistry. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos. Um, thank you very much for watching this.